know, oh God, they, those people then, they didn't know what they were doing, and we're so much better than them now. Or do you think that part of the attraction of him is the idea that he's able to do these things that are taboo and that uh, we're not, no longer really permissible? I think probably the latter. I think, um, I said, I, people have referred to Mad Men as a guilty pleasure. I think it's, I mean, I think it's so well constructed, it's really from the writing on up, that, um, that it's just a pleasure, well, it's certainly a pleasure to be part of or to be able to say all those, those wonderful things that I get to say. But I think some of the attraction of the character I play is, um, yeah, first of all, his ability to have thought what he's going to say in the moment, but, but also his um, courage to say it. I mean, they're standing around and someone's, they're all thinking the same thing, and he's the well, no, if you, no one else is going to say it, then I'm going to say it, and, and, and he will. Or, but, but also do things that, yeah, you'd, you'd be arrested for now. I mean, <laughs> um, um, but I think, as Dan said, that's part of the attraction of any period piece, um, is that they resemble those of us who who move in the, around in the world today, but they, they their their restrictions are, are different. They have a different set of, of rules by which to play. And um, you know, I was going to say that, that, that those the, the good thing about watching that scene, which is so fantastic, and the and, and the tension in in the room is is sometimes it's such a gift to have. I mean, if 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 the rules are that a woman isn't allowed to say a certain thing, or, or, or a man isn't allowed to, to approach a woman in a certain way, then you have obstacles. I mean, that's what we all, that's what you want. I mean, the conflict is what creates the drama, so if there's those internal conflicts, whether it's the costume, whether you can't move, so you have to find a way to get what you want or get to where you need to go, despite the restriction of the, of the way you're, you're dressed, or the fact that you can't behave in a certain way, that you would be able to freely ask for what you wanted now, that's what creates the, the that which you play against, which is really what we all are looking for. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, Jennifer. Uh, well, and I know that um, Andrew Davies, who wrote Pride and Prejudice, I think one of the reasons, for me anyway, one of the things I always assumed of why people seem to respond to it as they seem to, um, is so they do. Um, <laughs> is um, in the in the scripts, and I didn't keep mine, and I wish I had, because uh, they were quite extraordinary. His stage directions were amazing, and they were very irreverent. And I think that that helped us enorm enormously, um, for one thing, for everybody to be on the same page as a, as a company. So what kind of things would he write? Oh, um, see, I wish I could remember more of them. I mean, there would just be things like, he would suddenly say, um, there was one bit where it would say, um, you know, he would say, kiss her, kiss her, why can't he kiss her? You know, things like that. Or, um, you know, there was one where he intimated that Darcy was getting an erection, or <laughs> he, would, he described Lydia um, as a page three girl. Um, and just things like that that I think gave us all, within the confines of the piece, of the period of the piece, gave us a kind of energy and an irreverence, and a sort of um, sec kundalini, kind of sexy thing, that I think kind of got us all on the same page, and that kind of l lightened it up a little, and kept us from taking ourselves too seriously. I'm amazed those haven't been published. I mean, you well, well, that's why I wish I had them. I mean, I mean, they're not but you, you know, because they really, they really were, um, they really were fun. They were, it was fun, it was fun to read. I've done two Andrew Davis adaptations, actually, mm -hmm. one of Line of Beauty and one Sex of is big. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's exactly right that you know what you see on screen is pretty much Jane Austen. It's you know it's, it's the dialogue or the scenario. But what he does is is bring it up to speed for the actors, so you know what room you're in. And the state, you know, I think there was an erection, stage erection, and sense of sensibility <laughs> as well. Um, well. There was there was one. It's like Eleanor looks at Edward as if to say, "Oh, for fuck's sake." <laughs> <laughs> Which Jane Austen never wrote. <laughs> <laughs> she did. You know, she, she could have. You know, and, and so we know we know what's going on, and you get that through the screen. But you know, no, nobody has to say it. It's Fantastic. Well, Andrew Davis has such a best seller on his hands.